Hi, welcome to Storytime. My name is Anna Sosa Gavin, and I'm a volunteer with the National Library Board. When I'm not a volunteer, I am a storyteller and a coach with the Organic Storytellers here in Singapore. I am so excited to be reading to you today this book, Emma and the Eurasian Potluck. This book was written by Deborah Ann Francisco and illustrated by Madeline Wee. A special thanks to the Straits Times Press for allowing me to read you this book. This is the story of a little girl named Emma, who is Eurasian, and she's celebrating Christmas here in Singapore with her family, but it was 57 years ago. Let's find out how she celebrated Christmas. 25th of December of 1963, Singapore. Dear Diary, I am so exhausted but joyful. It is way past midnight. What a wonderful party we had last night. In the morning, all three of us were up early with the chickens to accompany mommy to Tekka Market. It was loud and humid as usual. Hordes of ladies were buying the ingredients for their Christmas meals. The crowd was unusually large. Lauren, Kay, and I trooped behind Mommy as she led way to Uncle Sang's fruit stall to buy three pineapples. We then marched to another stall where Machik Rosma charged us a small fee to grate our pineapples into a puree. Mommy also bought a chicken from Auntie Po and carrots and potatoes from Hai Yap. Finally, we purchased quail's eggs from Curly Lady. Mommy calls her that because she has the biggest hairdo in the whole market. With our shopping done for a very special Eurasian pie, we made our way home. After she was done cooking the chicken stew for the Eurasian pie and the roast beef, Mommy left. She had to help take care of our new baby cousin as Auntie Allison was down with the sniffles. At first, we panicked. How are we going to bake the pineapple tarts without mom? Three little girls baking all by themselves? Our yearly midnight Christmas party would not be the same without them. All our aunts, uncles, and cousins looked forward to mommy's tarts and we did not want to disappoint anyone. So guess what? I was put in charge of the baking today. That's Emma. And here are the recipes. Can she do it? I knew it was an important responsibility. I had seen Daddy prepare the charcoal oven for Mommy many times before. I was sure I could do it on my own with the help of Lauren and Kay. I had such high hopes. I thought being in charge would be a piece of cake. But I was wrong. Oh. Soon they were talking too much and making silly shapes with the short cusp pastry. I knew I had to say something. Come on, you two, stop fooling around. I told them, trying my best to show I was serious. Kay rolled her eyes at me and retorted. You're not in charge of me. Lauren did nothing. She merely laughed. Sisters. I turned my attention to the oven. I was fuming. This was turning out to be a disaster. I was too tired and angry to argue with them. Thankfully, they stopped clowning around and got down to work. I nervously placed a few pieces of black charcoal into the oven. I loved watching the coals glow the more I fanned the flame. Occasionally, the sudden sound of the coals crackling made me jump. Now, do you see any electricity here? No. Way back then, the oven worked with charcoal and real flames. So dangerous and so yummy. I am so proud of the work that we did. We made 80 tarts in all, not counting the ones we popped into our mouth. And here is another recipe, this one for pineapple tarts. 
While Kay and Lauren cleaned up the mess they had made, I filled a large oven dish with the chicken stew. Here is Emma, working hard. I made a pie crust with some short crust pastry dough and placed the dish in the oven. While I watched the Eurasian pie baking, my sisters decided to work on the decorations in the living room. Kay took twine and tied it across the windows. She gathered the Christmas cards we had received and hung them across it. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Lauren made streamers from twisted strips of red crap paper and hung them from wall to wall. There she is, twisting the paper. They put a Christmas record on the turntable and sang loudly. Lauren went slightly off key, but I did not dare tell her that. You know, way back then, there were no iPads. They used this thing called the turntable and they placed a record where music would come out from. Kay twirled round the Christmas tree and danced to the jazzy music till she was dizzy. Woo! I guess they were as excited as I was. They started the party already. When Mommy arrived home, she was so pleased to see the Eurasian pie and the tarts cooling on the dining table. Wow. Daddy was impressed that I had managed to get the charcoal oven going the whole afternoon. Dressed in our new clothes Mommy recently bought us from Robinson's department store, we went to the church for the Christmas Eve Mass. Family looks so pretty. Once home, our close relatives began streaming into our house. Each family brings a well-loved Eurasian dish to the potluck every year. I always look out for Aunt Jean's Devil's Curry and Auntie Cheryl's Pot Roast and Shugi Cake. Mmm, delicious. And here is another recipe, this one for pot roast. I enjoyed watching my three cousins, Bradley, Zachary, and Troy, eat their way through the night. Those boys have large appetites. Oh, Decas, how many tarts have you boys eaten already? Gasped an aunt. Now Decas is Chris tongue for, oh my goodness. Only one, came Troy's muffled reply. His mouth was stuffed with two tarts, and he had three in his left hand and one in his right. Ele pode comer tanto, the aunt chuckled in Chris tongue. That means he can eat so much, in Chris tongue. You know how I know? Because Chris tongue is just like Portuguese, and I'm Portuguese. Yes, Troy, Auntie is right. You really can eat a lot. Kay watched him in amazement. Zachary and Bradley backed away from us slowly to avoid attention. I could see that their plates were piled high with roast pork, potatoes, devil's curry, and large servings of Eurasian pie. The party is the highlight of our year. We always have a blast eating, chatting, and laughing for most of the night. As usual, someone began strumming a guitar, and soon, everyone was singing along to Christmas carols. Lauren was seated behind, beside me on the floor. She had her eyes closed and was singing Silent Night. Again, she was singing off-key, but I did not dare to tell her that. Now Emma is tucked in bed. It is now almost three in the morning. In a few hours, there will be Christmas hugs to give and presents to unwrap. I guess I should get some sleep. Santa will be here any minute now. Good night, diary, and Merry Christmas. Now, if you like this book, you will surely like the other books in this series. They will tell you about different cultures and how people celebrate special occasions. Thanks for watching.